Opus Senior Services presents Infection Control Training for Compassionate Care Visitors. What is COVID-19? Coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, is an illness caused by a virus that can spread from person to person. The virus that causes COVID-19 is a new coronavirus that has spread throughout the world. COVID-19 symptoms can range from mild or no symptoms to severe illness. What are the symptoms of COVID-19? People with COVID-19 have had a wide range of symptoms reported, ranging from mild symptoms to severe illness. The symptoms may appear two to 14 days after exposure to the virus and are as follows. A fever, cough, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, chills, repeated shaking with chills, muscle pain, headache, sore throat, new loss of taste or smell, diarrhea, nausea, or vomiting. If you have a fever and or any of these symptoms, please refrain from visitation in the center. How is COVID-19 spread? You can become infected by coming into close contact about six feet or two arm lengths with a person who has COVID-19. Close contact is also defined as hugging, kissing, caring for, or having shared eating or drinking utensils with a person who has confirmed or suspected COVID-19. COVID-19 is primarily spread from person to person. You can become infected from respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs, sneezes, or talks. This is why a face mask and face shield is your best protection. You may also be able to get it by touching a surface or object that has the virus on it and then touching your mouth, nose, or eyes. How can I protect myself and others from COVID-19? There is currently no vaccine to protect against COVID-19. The best way to protect yourself is to avoid being exposed to the virus that causes COVID-19. Wear a cloth face covering that covers your nose and mouth in public settings. Clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces. Wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. Practice social distancing. If you must go out in public places, stay at least six feet away from others, and if possible, disinfect items you must touch. How do I prevent the spread of COVID-19 if I get sick? Stay home if you are sick, except to get medical care. Separate yourself from other people and pets in your home. There is no specific treatment for COVID-19, but you can seek medical care to help relieve your symptoms. Know your risk for severe illness. Understand that everyone is at risk of getting COVID-19. Older adults and people of any age who have serious underlying medical conditions may be at higher risk for more severe illness. Why must we have screening processes in place? Screening processes are in place for your protection. The purpose of the screening is to prevent anyone who has symptoms of COVID or who has had potential exposure to someone with COVID from entering the center and subsequently spreading the virus to those who live in, work in, and visit the center. If after your visit, you develop a fever or symptoms consistent with COVID-19 or test positive for COVID-19 within 14 days of your visit, you must notify the center immediately. Now we'll talk about infection control basics. What is universal source control? Universal source control are systems, processes, and approaches applied uniformly to everyone who enters the center. This requires that we treat everyone the same, whether a person is asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic. While in the center, surgical or procedure masks and eye protection, such as face shields or goggles, are worn at all times by all team members, outside healthcare practitioners, and visitors. Procedure masks or cloth face masks 
or a tissue to cover the mouth and nose should be used by customers when out of their rooms or when receiving close personal care. Practice social distancing. You must maintain at least six feet social distancing with staff and other residents. What are transmission-based precautions? Contact precautions include performing hand hygiene and wearing gloves and gowns. Droplet precautions include performing hand hygiene, wearing gloves, gowns, masks, and shields or eye protection. Airborne precautions include using negative air pressure equipped customer rooms and wearing full PPE, including N95 respirators. Please note, we do not have the ability to practice airborne precautions here in our center. Signage to be familiar with. A stop, see nurse's station sign will be applied to the customer room door if contact precautions are in place. If a customer is on droplet precautions, you will see a sign that shows what PPE to wear and how to apply and remove it before entering or leaving the customer room. Please be sure to ask the nurse or nursing supervisor if you ever have any questions regarding the type of precautions in place for a customer. How do I don or apply and doff or remove PPE if droplet precautions are in use? Face masks, eye protection, such as goggles and face shields. Currently, these items are being applied in the screening area. We wear these at all times when we're in the center. Do your best to limit touching the mask and shield. If you do touch it, perform hand hygiene immediately. If you feel you need to take a break from the mask or face shield, you will need to leave the center via the screening area first. The usual order to don your PPE is to perform hand hygiene, put on your gown, your face mask, your eye protection, which include your face shield or goggles, and gloves. While removing PPE in our center, you will remove your gown and sleeves if applicable, and then your gloves. We are currently not removing the face mask and face shield. We leave the face mask and face shield in place and perform hand hygiene last. Contact and droplet precautions are to be utilized with cases of positive or suspected COVID-19. Ensure that alcohol-based hand rub is accessible. 60% alcohol strength or higher. PPE or personal protective equipment carts are strategically placed in each hallway to ensure easy access to extra PPE, such as gloves, gowns, masks, face shields, etc. Note, when using the plastic gowns and sleeves, they will be removed by tearing down the front of the gown and not by pulling over the head. Sleeves will be removed after the gown. Did you know there's something you can do to help stop the spread of COVID-19? It's very simple, properly washing your hands. Hi, I'm United States Surgeon General Jerome Adams, and here are five things you need to know to make sure you're washing correctly. One, wet your hands with warm or cold water. Either one is fine as long as it's clean. Two, lather your hands using either bar or liquid soap. Be sure to wash the backs of your hands, between fingers and under the nails. You don't have to use antibacterial soap, by the way. Regular soap does the job. Three, scrub your hands for at least 20 seconds. That's the time it takes to sing the happy birthday song twice. Four, rinse your hands well under clean running water. And five, dry your hands using a clean towel or air dry them. Please follow these steps for proper hand washing. And for more information about COVID-19, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. Compassionate care visitors should be performing hand hygiene before and after touching a customer, before and after clean or aseptic procedures, after bodily fluid exposure risk, after touching environmental surfaces, before and after eating, using the restroom, etc. If in doubt, perform hand hygiene. Optimizing supply of PPE and other equipment during shortages. 
Opus is currently implementing an approach called a contingency capacity strategy for PPE due to inconsistent availability of personal protective equipment from our suppliers. Contingency capacity is defined by the CDC's infection control guidance as taking measures that may be used temporarily during periods of anticipated PPE shortages. Contingency capacity strategies should only be implemented after considering and implementing conventional capacity strategies. While current supply may meet the facility's current or anticipated needs, there may be uncertainty if the future supply will be adequate and therefore contingency capacity strategies may be needed. Contingency capacity strategies are currently being implemented for face masks, N95 and K95 respirators, face shields, goggles, and gowns. For face masks, face shields, and goggles, we have implemented processes for extended use, cleaning, disinfection, and storage. In the absence of medical procedure gowns, we may use gowns made of plastic bags and add plastic sleeves to create the necessary fluid impermeable barrier required during care. You will be shown how to access, apply or don, remove or doff, and use all PPE appropriately prior to visiting. These next three videos from the CDC and OPIS will show you how to correctly don and doff traditional PPE as well as the plastic gowns. How to safely put on personal protective equipment or more commonly called PPE. We will demonstrate one way to appropriately put on or don PPE. More than one donning method may be acceptable to your facility. It's important that you receive training, demonstrate competency, and practice your healthcare facility's donning procedure. First, identify and gather the proper PPE to don, including an appropriately fitted isolation gown, a NIOSH-approved N95 filtering face piece respirator or higher level respiratory protection, or if a respirator is not available, a face mask, a face shield or goggles, and a pair of disposable patient examination gloves. Perform hand hygiene by using alcohol-based hand sanitizer or washing your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Put on the isolation gown. Tie all ties or snap all snaps. You may need assistance from another healthcare provider. Put on the N95 respirator. When using a respirator with a nose piece, fit it to your nose using both hands. Do not bend or tent the respirator. Extend the respirator under your chin, protecting both your mouth and nose. Pull the top strap over your head, placing it on the crown. Then pull the bottom strap over your head, placing it at the base of your neck. Lastly, perform a user seal check. Do this by using your hands to cover the surface of the respirator and gently exhale, checking that the face piece bulges slightly. Then, while keeping your hands over the respirator, take in a quick, deep breath, checking that the face piece collapses slightly. If air escapes through the edges, readjust the fit of your respirator and perform another user seal check. Do this each time you put the respirator on. If a respirator is not available, put on a face mask. Extend the face mask under your chin, protecting both your mouth and nose. If the mask has loops, hook them around your ears. If it has ties, secure them at the base of your neck and crown of your head. Next, put on a face shield or goggles.
Lastly, put on your gloves. Pull the gloves down so that they cover the wrist of the gown. You are now ready to enter the patient's room. How to safely take off personal protective equipment, more commonly called PPE. We will demonstrate one way to appropriately take off or doff PPE. More than one doffing method may be acceptable to your facility. It's important that you receive training, demonstrate competency in removing your PPE without contaminating yourself, and practice your healthcare facility's doffing procedure. Remove and discard your gloves. Gloves can be removed using more than one technique. For the glove and glove technique, Pinch the outside of the glove near the wrist. Peel downwards, pulling the glove inside out. With your ungloved hand, slide your finger under the wrist of your remaining glove. Again, peel downwards, turning the glove inside out. Discard the gloves. For the beaking method, pinch the outside of the glove near the wrist. Using your finger, Pull the glove inside out and over the fingers and thumb to form a beak. With the beaked hand, pinch the opposite glove at the wrist and pull downwards, turning the glove inside out. With the ungloved hand, pull the beaked glove off, touching only the inside of the glove. Next, remove your gown. Untie all ties or unsnap all snaps. Some gown ties can be broken rather than untied. In that instance, break the ties gently, avoiding a forceful movement. Reach up to the shoulders and carefully pull or roll the gown down and away from the body. Dispose of the used gown. You may now exit the patient's room. Perform hand hygiene by using alcohol-based hand sanitizer or washing your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Be sure to clean your wrists where the edge of the glove was located. Carefully remove the face shield or goggles by grabbing the strap and pulling upwards and away from your head. Do not touch the front of the face shield or goggles. Next, remove and discard the respirator or face mask. If you are wearing a respirator, remove the bottom strap by grabbing only the strap and bringing it carefully over your head. Grasp the top strap and bring it carefully over your head and then pull the respirator away from your face without touching the front of the respirator. If you are wearing a face mask, carefully untie the straps or unhook them from your ears and pull the mask away from your face without touching the front of the mask. Lastly, once again, perform hand hygiene after removing the respirator or face mask. You have now completed the doffing procedure. Lakeisha will now demonstrate for us donning PPE with a plastic gown. After performing hand hygiene, she pulled a gown and made a hole for her head. She'll now don the gown by sliding it over her head while she's wearing her mask and her shield and pulling it down over her arms. Now she will make holes in the sides for her arms. Next, she'll apply sleeves to protect her arms.
And lastly, she'll apply her gloves. She's making sure that the gloves cover her sleeves, and there you have it. When removing PPE, the first thing you'll do is remove the plastic gown by ripping it. You'll then pull the gown away from you, removing your sleeves and your gloves next. When you have finished removing all of the PPE, you will perform hand hygiene. Lakeisha is going to demonstrate for us donning and doffing a reusable gown. With clean hands, Lakeisha grabbed a bag and is cuffing the top of the bag. This bag is where she'll put her gown after it's been used. By cuffing the top of the bag, she ensures she'll only touch the outside where she'll tie the bag with clean hands. Next, she's going to grab her reusable gown and she'll put it on. She's going to tie it at the top, which will be right below her neck, and at the bottom, which will fall in the middle of her back. Now she's going to put on her gloves. You'll notice she'll take the gloves and pull them up over the end of the sleeve to ensure none of her skin is showing. And now she's ready to go. Now she'll demonstrate how to remove or doff the gown. The first thing she's going to do is remove her glove by pinching the inside of the glove and pulling it into the other glove. Then she's going to slide a clean finger underneath the glove and pull it over the dirty glove. She's going to take those to the closest trash can and she's going to perform hand hygiene. She's then going to reach back and untie the gown. And she's going to remove it, being very careful to not touch the outside or potentially contaminated area of the gown. She's going to roll it away from her and place the gown in the bag. She would then perform hand hygiene, uncuff the bag, tie it, and put it in the designated location. What can you expect during your visit? As always, you should expect compassionate, respectful, mission-focused team members caring for our customers. Please note that at this time, all meal service in our dining rooms has been suspended and we are working on a plan to safely resume some level of meal service in the dining room. Related to safety and restrictions in place related to visitation, it will not be possible to eat with or share a meal with a customer. This is because visitors must wear a face mask and face shield at all times while in the center. Group activities and gatherings are currently suspended and we are working on a plan to safely resume some out of room activities. Practice social distancing. You must maintain at least six feet social distancing with staff and other residents. Visitors are requested to remain in designated visitation areas. Limiting movement in the center further reduces the risk of spreading the COVID-19 virus. Children under the age of 18 may visit, but must be supervised by the adult they are visiting with. Children over the age of 2 will be expected to wear a cloth face covering that covers their nose and mouth. Failure to follow these visitation expectations may result in a revocation of visitation privileges. If you have any questions, please speak with the center administrator.